Addy of Soldiers. Ever since I did one of these last year, everyone's been like, do a tattoo tour, do a tattoo tour, I want update tattoos, and I am nothing if not a people pleaser, so here we are. If you don't know me, hi, my name is Rachel, and I have a lot of ink on me. I did a tattoo tour, tattoo, t tattoo tour, wherever the card is. I did a tattoo tour last year, and I have gotten a couple more since then, so I guess I will be doing a updated tattoo tour every year until eternity or until I run out of money, whatever comes first. Also, if you don't regularly follow me, uh, I'm a book blogger, but I'm sure you put those context clues together already for yourself. So a lot of my tattoos are book related or book adjacent, so there's gonna be enough uh, literary Easter eggs in here to rival a Marvel movie. However, like I mentioned having done this last year, uh, I still have those tattoos, so the stories behind them haven't changed, so I guess you can get an abbreviated version if you go to the last video, but there's like new ones this time, so please stay, new content. Quick disclaimer is that yes, Tattoos do cost a lot of money, and that's something that I have decided to put value in. In my brain, I'm investing in art, um, and you don't have to spend your money on tattoos if you don't want to. And I don't even really care if you don't like my tattoos, because guess what? I do, and they're on my body, and I'm the one that has to look at them every day. So without further ado, grab a drink, grab a snack, and join me while we do an updated 2022 tattoo tour. A tattoo? -er? All right, well, I guess... Step one is just to take this off. Let's start on this arm. So I have a full rose sleeve on this arm. That is all line work, and I got this done in three pieces. So the first piece I got was these couple roses. This was in February of 2020. Then I got my shoulder piece and upper arm done in, I think, August of 2020. And then I got this final piece uh, at the bottom in December of 2020. So this took a full year and each piece was like two to three hours. So in total, this is the one that's taken the longest and been the most expensive. I chose roses because roses were my grandmother's favorite flower. I'm partially named after her. And I am the pale English rose that you read about in all those romance novels. Seriously, it's raining and I'm filming inside my apartment today and I still have sunscreen on. And on the bottom piece, I also have a little creature. This is my uh, raven skull that I have named Moore after the Morrigan. All of my creature tattoos, which I have a handful, uh, are all named because why not? You know, they're friends. Sometime in 2021, I went and got a touch up on it to add some more vines and actually thicken up uh, the shoulder piece. So I extended it more onto my collarbones and I think that looks really nice with any kind of shirt collar, you can kind of see a little bit of it peeking out. And then I also got this quote, which is one of the first official book things, uh, which is Be Afraid and Happy, which is from one of my all-time favorite series, The Ra Raven Boys by Maggie Steve Otter, of which I have three and a half tattoos from, which is a super cool series all about ancient Welsh kings and ley lines and magic and dreams. This is specifically from Raven King, uh, in which I believe Henry says it to Ganzi, and he says, if you cannot be unafraid, be afraid and happy. And that line resonated with me so hard, but that idea that you can't be afraid all the time and that you have to find happiness and you have to look for happiness in small places. I just think it's so lovely. And to wrap up this sleeve, I'm gonna give y'all a piece of advice, okay. So a lot of people will say that the part of your arm that hurts getting tattooed the most is like your elbow or like the inner trench here. Those weren't too bad, but right here was a bitch. I guess just because it's like pure bone, but like, oh my god, I would not recommend doing anything on a shoulder. And then also on this arm is my ambigram tattoo. This was my very first tattoo and actually one of my favorites and also one of the ones that hurt the most, which is likely because the artist that did this was still an apprentice, so she was cheaper, but she also like hadn't quite perfected her craft yet, so she's a little heavy-handed. But I love this tattoo so much because if you look at it this way, it says fantasy but if you look at it this way, it says reality. There's a mindfuck for all of you on this fine Tuesday, or maybe Wednesday, whenever I upload this. The reason I got this one first is because uh, when I was like 12 or 13, and the idea of tattoos like became a concept to me, I remember someone saying, if you want a tattoo, you have to want it for a really long time. Otherwise you're gonna regret it or you know whatever. And so I took that to heart and I saw this somewhere on the internet of like, prehistoric tumbler, and I literally printed it, cut it out, and stuck it on, I think it came with me through three laptops, so I would stare at it every day and like think and know if I wanted it or not, and then behold like 12 years later, I still wanted it, so I got it put on me. And as somebody who's always been a big reader and loves fantasy novels above all else, I just love that 
the fantasy and the reality are kind of two sides to the same thing of like you can't have one without the other but at times those kind of two things can bleed into each other and I, I just I like that sentiment I think it's cool is that everything on this arm yes okay moving on to the other one I say that because I've forgotten that I have tattoos sometimes and that's also a reason why I will never get any tattoos like on my back because if I can't see them they don't exist to me. I also have one on the back of my calf that I forget about all the time and sometimes I look down and I'm like, oh, what's that? And I'm like, oh yeah, okay, no, it's fine. This arm, my left arm, we're gonna show off this piece first because it is one of my newest acquisitions. I just got it in, wait, what month is it? Did I get this in March? Maybe I got this in April? Time doesn't exist anymore, I don't know. I think I got this in April, but anyway, this is my Blackberry half sleeve. I think it is so beautiful. I love her so much. A couple years ago, I came up with the idea that I wanted to have a blackberry tattoo because I grew up up the coast of BC where the blackberries are rampant in the summertime and like I grew up you know, picking blackberries and making blackberry pies with my grandparents and like my family. And I said that out loud to my dad who also has tattoos and he loved that idea and he was like, oh, that's so great. Like we should, we should get we should both get blackberry tattoos and that'll be like, you know, be our thing. And I had a very specific artist in mind to do mine and she hasn't opened her books in like two years. So I would just fingers crossed praying to whatever deity would take me that she would finally open her books so that I would be able to you know, book her. But my dad, the man of determination that he is, booked his first with another artist and he got a full color blackberry sleeve and he hasn't let me forget it for the whole year that he's had it of like oh well looks who like who got theirs first and like oh you're getting a blackberry tattoo you want to copy me and just this whole like oh what are you gonna get your sleeve done so i finally have it on me okay get off my back dad but yeah so i think it's cool that my dad and i have matching tattoos so that's a sergeant family fun fact for all of you today also on this arm i have a tiny sergeant stripes which uh my family is not affiliated with the military at all. I've never been in a military. I don't even know what the military is. I don't even know what they do. My family is not affiliated with the military, but our last name is Sergeant, so that's fun. Also, my dad and I have matching Sergeant stripes on the same arm, so that's another fun fact for you all today. If any of you ever go to a Sergeant family trivia night, you know, you already have two legs up. And then we have this arm, which like this arm is the kind of like the classy, you know, like fully cohesive one. This is the like whatever shit I want I'm gonna put on this arm arm. In your mind, you have two arms. One of them is organized, one of them is chaos. This forearm also has the most book related th things on it. Yes, okay, I just have to fact check myself. The first one is one that a lot of people see that actually is one of my smallest tattoos that is also one of my favorites. And that is my tiny little wrist book. I got this little guy a couple summers ago and I love him. He's just, you know, he's like, small and subtle but still like adorable and this tattoo was the first time i visited one of my favorite artists named claudia and she is all over my body so uh including this next one uh, and that is my excelsior tattoo excelsior is from king arthur it means onwards and upwards and as somebody who is both a lit major who loves king arthur and loves mythology that I just felt that was like really perfect. It also sort of comes from the Raven Boys, but like, shh, don't tell anyone. But I love having that on me in an easily accessible place where I can look at it and be like, mm, yes, you sure do love old literature. Also, don't forget that you are a king, yes. Constantly going onwards and upwards to greater things, which I sure hope I am, because my mortgage is expensive. Another Raven Boys tattoo that I have is this one on the inner part of my forearm. This is probably the most detailed tattoo that I have because the artist uses single needle. And so usually tattoos are anywhere from like two to five needle, at least the ones that I've gotten. And this one is just singular. So it's just it's super teeny tiny and the details are insane. It's three overlapping branches, which I got because Raven Boys is a symbol of ley lines and kind of intersecting magic. And then also I love that kind of like twisted nature fairy kind of magic, which we will see again later on me. And then also on this arm is the one that <laughs> I think most people recognize and most people comment on probably because it's a little ridiculous and also because it's the darkest one I have on this arm and because I am pale as fuck you can't help but see it but it's still freaking adorable so like why wouldn't you want to see it and that is my absolutely precious little Loch Ness tattoo. <laughs> Look at his little nose! He's so precious! <laughs> so I got this little guy when I went to Scotland and that was in 2019. And I got him as a souvenir because like, look at me, you know, I am Highlander Daughter Reborn. I put in an audition tape to play Claire from Outlander's Daughter in season two. Ergo, I didn't get it because I am shit at acting on camera. 
but like the fact that I was put forward for that role and the fact that like my entire dad's side of the family comes from Scotland, I was like, yeah, you know, I think it's appropriate. But the point is, is that I wanted a souvenir that wasn't like another plaid scarf. So I figured, you know, this little guy was as good as any. And if you hadn't guessed already, I love folklore and mythology. I thought it was a fun little homage to not only my family heritage, but my love for little mythological creatures. Also fun fact, you're actually getting two fun facts within this two for one deal, is that Celtic languages are in Scotland pronounced Gaelic and in Ireland pronounced Gaelic and the Gallic word for Loch Ness is actually pronounced niche. So uh, this is niche. <laughs> Moving around my arm, this is my space snake. <laughs> this doesn't really have any significance other than the fact that I thought it was cool and also at the time this part of my arm was empty and my brain like wouldn't let me focus on anything until I slapped something on there. So this is my space filler. Oh, I'll see myself out. This is also done by the same artist. So the detail that she put into him is amazing. It's like half dark and half light with a bunch of celestial bodies and stars. And then I also have some uh, constellations around it as more gap filler. Uh, but Gemini is me, Scorpio is my mom, and Capricorn is my dad. Also because he is a creature, I have named him. Um, actually, I'll say them because like I feel like a lot of my creature tattoos like to me, some of them are gendered. This one is more ambiguous. Uh, so this one's name is Jormungandr, which is the giant world eating snake from um, Norse mythology. One of Loki's children who comes around during Ragnarok. And you know, everybody in Norse mythology is swapping genders all the time. So like if Jormungandr themselves wants to come to me and like, you know, delineate what their gender is to me, that's fine. But right now it is a they them. Also have this guy. So this is a quote in Latin from Virgil and the Aeneid. Uh, and it translates to, if I cannot bring down heaven, then I will raise hell. Which I know, I'm freaking wearing a moonstone pennant and have purple eyeshadow on. Like I don't look intimidating at all. And yes, I have read the Aeneid. I love me some Virgil, I love me some Milton, but this quote actually didn't come from me reading that. I didn't read the Aeneid until like way into my 20s. But I first saw this quote in a Cassandra Clare book. <laughs> I first saw it in this YA urban fantasy from like 2010, uh, which is City of Lost Souls. Yes. Oh, I'm good. Which is the fifth one in that series. And uh, when Sebastian says this to Clary, um, and then if you know his character at all, makes a lot of sense. But he says it in the original Latin. I remember being like, damn, that's a cool ass quote. And then I found out that it was like actually from an old literature. It wasn't just something that Cassandra Clare made up. And I'm like, damn, that's even cooler. Hell yeah, I want that on my body. Also, it's very fun because a lot of people ask if it's a Bible verse and I just get to stand there like, yes. We are still not done this arm, but we are very close. We're on our last piece. <laughs> so surprise, surprise, this is another book tattoo. So this sword is from my favorite book of all time, which is the Starless Sea by Aaron Morgenstern, which is about a library that exists outside of space and time. And the only way to get to the library is if it offers you a door. And when it offers you a door, it'll give you a motif of three items, a key, a bee, and a sword. So in this, we have the key, the bee, and the sword. In the vines, we have the word uh, rever, which is French for dreamer. And I sincerely apologize that after taking multiple years of French and living in a country where French is our second national language, that I still cannot pronounce French words for shit. I just can't roll my R's properly, which makes no sense. My name's Rachel, so you know, je suis désolé. I feel like I'm saying this for all of them, but this is also one of my favorite tattoos <laughs> because now I always have a key to the Starless Sea on me. Uh, however, this is also one that I regret the most and not because I don't like it or anything, but because of the placement. So as you can see, when I bend my arm, my sword bends. It's about as straight as I am. So if you're planning on getting a sword, I would maybe recommend doing it like on a flatter surface area, maybe on like the side of your calf or like on your forearm. So like tattoo itself, 10 out of 10. It's like placement, like five out of 10. Like I probably should have planned that one a little bit better, but like, what are you gonna do? Okay, so those are all the ones on the top half of my body. I don't have any on like my ribs or on my stomach because ow, but I do have some on my legs, including a lot of my newer ones. Cause you know, I started building my arms down and then realized like, oh God, I'm running out of space real fast. We gotta build from the ground up now. And because I sure as hell can't kick my leg up that far out. Nope. We're gonna do an angle change. I think I'm gonna go sit on my couch uh, and I will show you what's on my legs. Welcome to my couch. You guys are still a little, uh, a little high. Okay. 
slightly better. I have a feeling this is where the most B roll is gonna come in. I'm actually gonna put my robe back on again because it started raining harder and it's a little cold. So I have two ankle tattoos and a collection of animals on my legs. I'm not quite sure why the arms are florals and the legs are creatures, but that's just how my brain ended up braining. So let's let's switch things up. Let's start with my other leg. I am keeping my socks on this entire time. Don't get weird. I also didn't shave my legs for this because I didn't want to. First up is my ankle tattoo that says follow the green way and that is a reference to yet another book which is The Golden Book of Fairy by O.R. Melling. I accidentally found it when I was like 12 or 13 and I took that out every single week of my grade 8 year from our school library. I lived at my house. I found a copy like years later on eBay for like 20 bucks. So I bought it right away and it has such a special place in my heart. Uh, but one of the things of that book is if you want to go to the fairy realm that you have to follow the green way, which is kind of a reference to like following the left path, taking the low road, full of that Irish Gaelic folklore. It's also the only tattoo I have on me in color. I never plan to get color tattoos but I felt like that one was somewhat appropriate. And then next to that is my spooky deer. This is Ichabod. This is not a good angle for this at all. Oh my goodness. He was one of the first animal tattoos that I ever got. And he's just cool. Cause like, if you haven't known me for very long, I love deer antlers. I don't know why. I just love bones and as you can see, there's a lot of little undead creatures on me and you're gonna see more later. The detail in him is so cool because if you look closely at his eye, it kind of looks like tree rings. I might get him touched up at some point. I'm not sure if I would like add to him or maybe get like some more shading done or something. But for the meantime, he's just chilling and he's doing pretty good. And then on the back of my calf, can I even, how is this angle gonna work? Uh, okay, it's mostly my butt, but that's fine. <laughs> Whatever, roll the B-roll. On the back of my calf, I have a moth tattoo, and this is from the same artist that did my Undead Deer. Uh, I And I will have all my artists linked below if that wasn't already clear. I have also decided to name her Sarai after Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor, which is another one of my favorite books. But see, this is a problem though, because I forget that I have this one on me all the time. So it's like a fun surprise every time I look at the back of my leg. Also, your knee pits. Super not fun to get tattooed, would not recommend. Also on this leg is one of my most famous tattoos, which I think is really funny. This one was featured in a viral TikTok of mine. So everybody say hello to Glendower, my jackalope tattoo. The name Glendower is also from the Raven Boys. It is the name of a Welsh king. Jackalopes are mostly a like Northern British creature. They are not real, unfortunately, but this little guy lives on uh, on my left calf. <laughs> I love him so much. He's creepy and cute and so dynamic. Like, look at that pose. Look how he's pointing those toes. He knows what he's doing. I have two final tattoos on this leg, um, and one of them's gonna have a long story, so like, buckle in. The first one, which is fun and fresh and cute, is on my ankle, and that is my Astravars tattoo. Astravars is from A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab, which is one of my all-time favorite books, and the main character is a blood magician who can travel between dimensions, and Astravars is the thing that he says when he's dimension hopping. I love Kel, and I would defend Lila Bard with my dying breath, also, the author V.E. Schwab lives in Scotland, so I just thought it was like a fun little thing. Also, hot tip, no matter what language you are getting it done in, always double check the spelling because I had a little panic attack like mid-tattoo when I was like, is there an R in there? And there was, it's fine. And then lastly is a tattoo that is in the same spot as another tattoo that you will have seen if you watched my original tattoo tour video uh, because I got my very first cover up this year. I don't really know if that's something to brag about, but you know, here we are. When I posted this online, a lot of people were like, which one did you get covered? Like, is it the jackalope? And no, 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 Glendower is fine, just where he is. Don't worry about him. Last summer, I decided to get an undead kelpy hippocampus type of like horse snake water creature because again love gallic gaelic celtic folklore i love kelpies i think they're a really cool mythological creature and i'm an ex-horse girl so like it absolutely makes sense and at the time the artist that i went to who i really like uh, the same artist that did my sword um and i would still recommend them they have done actually a lot of my dad's tattoos so like they're cool but i think horses were not their specialty this is the thing when i was looking at the sketches and everything my brain was like that's cool I, yeah i want that but then when I finished getting it done, I realized that the proportions were a little off. And at first I was like, you know what? 
it's fine, I can deal with it, like it's not that big of a deal, I think it still looks cool, um, but <laughs> my brain just could not get over the fact that the legs didn't quite look right and the chest like wasn't quite right. Um, and I wanted more of a Kelpie and it ended up being a little bit more of a Greek hippocampus, which wasn't bad because I also love Greek mythology, but it wasn't quite what I originally wanted. So I found another artist to do a cover up for me and this is the sketch that I showed her. I was like, I want a snake with florals because it's already kind of snaky looking. So like, can you do this? And surprisingly she said yes. So I guess my superb artistic nature convinced her. She did a wonderful job on this baby right here. This is Medusa. She's also a little creepy, a little undead. She has uh, two white eyes. And then unbeknownst to me, uh, this artist added in blackberries to their flowers. And I was like, huh, look at that. We're being so thematically consistent. Probably my favorite part about this is that in the flowers, they look a little tie dye almost. And that's because you could see my original tattoo peeking through. So it gives this really neat like marbled effect to the flowers and she added white on top to kind of take away a lot of the darker shading, but it's like so unique and cool. So this is a point where I tell you all a couple things I learned about getting a cover up tattoo while I was getting it done. So the science behind a tattoo is that when the ink is getting put into your skin, all of your white blood cells will rush to that area because it's a foreign substance in your skin and they're gonna try and remove the ink. But because the ink particles are too big for them to fully like break down and take away and like absorb it back into your body, what they'll do is they'll like wrap themselves around it and kind of like mummify it in your skin. <laughs> Yes, that is the exact words that my tattoo artist used. And even though technically getting a tattoo is like a wound, um, that's why they continue to show up on your skin even if other wounds heal. But what I didn't think about is that if you were getting a cover-up tattoo, the artist is basically needling over scar tissue. So getting a cover-up tattoo hurts so much more than getting a regular tattoo because you're basically going over like, an, well, first of all, an old wound, but you're already going over a place that has ink in it. And of course, everyone's pain threshold is different, but I think this one was one of my most painful tattoos. But mine might have also hurt more because the tattoo I was getting covered was still fresh. It was only a year old. So apparently if your tattoo is older, it'll have an easier time getting it covered up. Something else to think about is if you're gonna get a cover-up tattoo, depending on, of course, what it is and like how big it is, uh, what kind of shading it has, how old it is. And if you're getting a cover-up done that has, you know, that's bigger, has more shading, has maybe different or more color, it's probably gonna take more time because it's gonna be bigger and it's likely gonna be more expensive. So so just keep that in mind. <laughs> this one wasn't too bad though. My artist was really fast. She did all of that in four hours. And because my original shading wasn't super dark, it wasn't as expensive as maybe it could have been. So like final tattoo, like 10 out of 10, love it. Full experience, like six out of 10. Like I don't, I'm gonna try not to do it again. Is that gonna stop me from getting more tattoos? No. Am I gonna think about them maybe a little longer than I have in the past? Probably. <laughs> all right, so that's all my leg ink. I'll meet you back in front of the bookshelves. <laughs> Hi, welcome back. Wow, it got so much darker in just the like 10 minutes that I was letting my camera charge. Thank you for joining me for my tattoo tour, my tattoo of 2022. Now at the current moment, I do not have any more planned or booked. Mostly because the last one I got was like kind of expensive. So I just, I needed to give myself a break. However, I still do have plans for a couple more. Number one I want to get is I want to get a matching moth on the back of my other calf so that I can have two and the symmetry will satisfy my brain. The second thing that will satisfy my brain is to get this gap filled in. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do, but my brain looks at it and goes, Hey, the rest of your arm has stuff. This, this is empty. Needs, we need something right there. My current idea is a jawbone, maybe with like some botanicals or something around it because we love botanicals in this household if you couldn't tell. The only kind of plants that I cannot kill are fake or tattooed on me. I know that I already have a lot of antlers on me, but you know, deer bones are the ultimate accessory. There's also another quote from an Icelandic poem that I actually read for school and the translation of one line that I just love so much is fate goes ever as she must. And I love the fact that it is first of all personified and second of all that fate is female. And I want to get that in the original Icelandic text. So that will probably be like a space filler or gap filler for something, but not on this arm because I already have script. Also debating some kind of thigh or hip piece. I'm not entirely sure 
what yet, but I just really love how that aesthetically looks on people. And I also want to get some more little fairy creatures, maybe a fairy prince or like a half human, half animal, little fae, probably on my leg with to go with like that calf sleeve or maybe like on the inner part of my arm, like by the blackberries. I'm not sure because this section of your arm apparently hurts a lot and I'm a wimp. So I'm like, I'm a wimp, as I say, my entire body is just covered with, you know, evidence of many people stabbing me for multiple hours on end. But like my skin is sensitive, so I don't know if I ever want to get anything done there because that's like the ouch zone. And then of course we'll see what other books in the future speak to me on a spiritual level. Though I don't have plans to travel anywhere anytime soon, I think it would be fun to get a tattoo from wherever I travel to because that's like a fun souvenir that doesn't take up any space in your luggage that's better than like a little tacky like I was here plastic Duomo statue. Oh, I am basically out of tea, so we're gonna wrap this up. Please leave down below if you yourself have any tattoos, especially bookish tattoos, because I love talking to other bookworms to see like what book series did you get permanently on your body? And once again, all my tattoo artists' uh, Instagram handles will be linked down below so you can go and visit them if you yourself are in Vancouver, or in one case in Edinburgh. <laughs> okay, my camera battery is at a spicy low percentage. I only have like an hour of daylight left and I want to film some TikToks. And then also I think I need to go and get myself a granola bar or something because I'm feeling a little shaky. Which also, make sure to bring snacks to any long tattoos you have, okay? This arm piece, this one, this took six hours and I did it in one shot, which I would also not recommend doing, but I needed more snacks than I brought. So, you know, do as I say, not as I do. You know where to click to like the video. You know where to click to subscribe. I hope you guys are all having a nice day wherever you are and I will see you all next week. Bye.